it's a beautiful day to you our lovely and smart real estate investors both at home and also in diaspora hope you all are doing well today i'm super delighted to welcome you to another extensive and of course elaborate episode of property matters here on youtube in case you're coming across a video like this for the first time property matters is a youtube talk show that addresses different aspects of real estate investment so what we need you to do for us and what we are begging you to do for us is the very first thing we need you to do is just to hit the subscription button on the notification bell so that when we drop an elaborate video like this you will be the first person to see it so i want to say a very big thank you to everybody that subscribed and we want to say a very a bigger thank you to those that will subscribe after today property matters is where we discuss everything you need to know about real estate it's like a real estate surgical room where we dissect and explain every procedures and processes of real estate investment we even went as far as you know unraveled different manipulations that have you know plagued the nigerian real estate market over the shortest period of time so once again do well to subscribe to this channel turn on the notification bell so that when we drop a video you will be the first person to see it i'll be back immediately after the short commercial stay tuned every day is obviously a holiday if you do the right real estate investment a lot of people have expressed their concerns over the future but one of the ways you can safeguard the future is to make an investment that will give you quality and of course 200 return on your investment ladies and gentlemen i'm very very delighted to welcome you to fairmont smart and green estate over this estate they've been price reduced twice and presently we have both commercial and residential estate over there is our basketball court and our football pitch and over there is where we're going to have the parking lot the visitors welcome and of course the lounge this is the estate famous green and smart estate and as you can see that the road have been paid and some pegs have been made for physical allocation the beautiful thing about this estate basically is that over there down is where we have the proposed international airport and this is why you need to get into this estate you know that the prices of property facing the airport in the Keja is from 20 billion um 300 million 1 billion and the likes right now you have the opportunity to buy 500 square meter for 25 million 750 thousand and of course the commercial for 60 million depending on the payment structure that is convenient for you this is Fairmont Green and Smart Estates here in the beautiful city of Ayatoru, opposite the proposed international airport. For more information about this, holla. All right, you're welcome back. I'm super delighted to be on your screen today. And I want to say thank you for always viewing our videos. Thank you for always subscribing. Thank you for all the support and everything we have gotten from you people. You know, we will not be here and Property Matters will certainly not be in existence if you have not showed your continuous support to us. So thank you very much. Of course, for those who are still not subscribed, our indices is showing that we have more people who have not subscribed viewing this video than people who have subscribed. So our appeal to you people is that please do well to subscribe to this channel. Support us by subscribing. Encourage us by subscribing. You know, when we see people subscribe, it's always like a source of inspiration for us to do more. And of course, to keep giving our best. So thank you in advance and thank you in anticipation as you subscribe. So on today's episode of Property Matters, I'm going to be talking about waterlogged lands and I'm going to be explaining some key features of what you need to understand as well as the cost implications of buying a waterlogged land. Over, over time, I've always explained to people the risks that are attached to several real estate investments and I also want you to have a thorough and, and of course a good overview of the properties you're buying. I've seen instances whereby a lot of people have bought properties and not understanding the circumstances that surround the properties. A whole lot of people have been manipulated. We've seen instances whereby people will tell you a property has a particular title, then after a thorough due diligence, you find out that such, such titles do not exist. I've seen instances whereby I personally, I, over the cost of two weeks, I've spent nothing less than 100000 doing what we call the thorough due diligence, investigating different lands and i also want to quickly mention that for some of us for some of our dear um, investors and dear um, clients who also want to do due diligence i want to quickly let you know that the cost of due diligence at alausa lagos state has increased so for those who have been paying 10,000, 15,000, i want you to understand that at this time and age you will have to pay more so 
in case someone is asking you to pay more please i want to quickly reiterate the fact that the person is not siphoning you that's just the reality of what is going on so the state government have increased the cost of due diligence so at this point in time you have to pay more than what you've been paying thank you very much so let's talk about waterlogged lands and i've explained um what you need to know about water in fact there was a, a particular episode where i did an extensive explanation of flooding and today today's episode of property matters is very very you know related to that so in the course of our conversation you'll be seeing clips of videos and waters and of course this obviously will give us an overview of what a waterlogged land should look like now i've spoken with a lot of real estate investors and i've asked them what are the major indices or what are those things they put into considerations when they want to buy a um a a property a lot of people will tell me that of course i've had interaction and some will tell me ah to me the title of the property is very very important and that obviously is true to other people they will tell me what they are actually concerned is the location which is true and i've seen instances whereby people have different reasons for investing and i've seen instances whereby real estate companies have used that to you know do a lot of property listings and of course advertisements but today i'm going to talk about um water log land is this advisable you know most of the properties that has dominated um the real estate market scene are properties that are on the highland and in the previous episode i've explained to you people that the island is surrounded by water and when you're buying a property more importantly in places that are flood prone you need to put some important things into considerations i would have gone further but i was persuaded not to so that real estate investors will not misinterpret what i'm saying and a lot of people will not uh, stop buying properties because a lot of things i wanted to review would have opened your eyes to see the way um water situations are being handled in nigeria so let's talk about this now when you look at the island let's start from the lekki axis the lekki axis is surrounded by um a water oh i'll be, be back immediately after this short timeout stay tuned you thought you've seen it all at the city you thought you've seen it all at fairmont you thought you have seen it all at tiwa you thought you've seen it all at all that development that we have here in the lekki expressway but trust me this obviously is one of the best development i've seen in this lekki Air expressway corridor as you can see you are seeing that beauty is meeting with luxury and every dime you have paid here is worth the penny look at the development as you can see that um, the green area here has been completely done okay and of course we also found out that there's going to be a water fountain how beautiful this estate will be it's going to be the state of the arts in terms of development the state of the heart in terms of quality and the state of the heart in terms of delivery when it comes to real estate investment you need to understand that the ability of the delay of the developer to give quality delivery is as important as the property of course you know this property is covered with the CO2, so there's no controversies about that and of course it's facing the lucky the beautiful lucky expressway over here the road network is being done let me tell you one thing see see of all is the title facing the lucky expressway this property is just in five minute proximity to the popular lucky expressway this is mns phase 3 available in 500 square meter and also in 300 square meter the 500 square meter is selling for 26 million naira. Of course, only allow that million to scare you. You can do a 5 million naira initial deposit and spread your money in six, in 31 days, in three months, in six months, and in one year. As you can see, that of course, the money is not even as scary as it is. Other developers are selling for 35 million. I know somebody that is selling for 27 million. I know someone that is even planning to sell for 35 million. So if you have the opportunity to buy this place for 26, with an initial deposit of 5 million and a spread rebound of up to one year, tell me, this is home. You can view this place, you have state of the art shortlet, your beautiful hotel accommodation, and the, oh, think of every other beautiful investment that can give you good money. You know, one thing they used to say is that if you don't know how to make your money work for you, you know work for money for the rest of the life. and one of the ways you can make your money work for you is to have several plots of land here and watch 
how your return, your 200 return on investment will catch up with you the shortest time possible. Have a nice day. Take your text. All right, you're welcome back. I we don't take these for granted. Thank you for staying tuned, and of course, thank you for viewing. And sure to subscribe. Back to our discussion. When you look at Lekki, you will find out that Lekki is located at the eastern end of the Kuramu Waterway, and Lekki straight east eastward into the Etiosa local government area. And this obviously covers about 22 kilometer. Lekki is bounded in the east of Etiosa and by the west, where we call the Cowries Crease and the Kuramu Waterways. When you look at the north of Lekki, you also discover that the north of Lekki is also bounded by the lagoon. That is for Lekki. Let us go to Aja and let's see the way the Aja work. Now, Aja is located beside the water. And of course, when you look at the Badori axis, you will see that from the Badori and when you drive towards the other part of Aja, you'll be seeing um, the waterways right in front of it. And Aja, um, what actually causes water in Aja is that when there's an heavy downpour, the floods in that water sometimes floods the streets. And there have been stories of how residents use Kino. And one thing investors does not understand, most thing I want most real estate investors to understand is that at the moment, some of these places, some of the residents in Aja are trying everything they can do to curtail this. But at the moment, nothing has been done. Now, this is why sometimes when it rains, it is very important that you understand the topography of where you are investing. And this will enable you to know the cost of buying a waterlogged area despite the fact that lekki is waterlogged the cost of properties in lekki is very very expensive and that is to extend to other places like aja shongotedu abijo and other places of the island now when you're buying a waterlogged area you have to consider some of these things that i've mentioned what is the situation of this place during rainy season will i be able to access my properties or will this water act, disrupt me from doing the development goals that i have for these properties and when you're buying a water log land you need to understand that sand filling is good but sand filling doesn't stop water from entering your plot of land and i've said it before that when you're buying real estate more importantly if it's a water log land the reputation of the company you are buying from matters because to avoid regular flooding, some important apparatus, some important facilities must be put on site. And in cases whereby the developer you're buying real estate from does not understand these contingency plans, you'll be putting your own investment at risk. In most cases, if I want to buy a property and I found out the place is waterlogged, the very first thing that comes to my mind basically is how do I access this property? What kind of vehicle can I drive to this property? What is the condition of the drainages? Are those drainages usually covered with water when they are flooding? What is the yearly cost of maintenance of that access? Do I need to fix my road every um, quarter whenever this rain damages it? Or you even have to ask the question, what exactly is the quality of the road that is being done and what are those things that can cause us regret if they are not properly done a real estate investor doesn't just look at those beautiful things that has been said and as well as the return on the investment whenever it comes to real estate investment you need to over prioritize the risk that exists and of course when you have prioritized that risk when you have understood the risk then you cannot create a solution on what can be done i've seen several instances that whenever it rains many real estate prop or many property owners cannot access their sites i've seen this in major places in aja i've seen this place in major places some part of shongutedo largely um, badori and of course i've seen places in abijo and of course i'll be showing you of course that's a video of um a place in awoyaya that was flooded okay so you need to understand now when you're buying a waterlogged land what are those things you need to do 
Now, the very first thing you can do to control flooding is to do a very, very mighty drainage system. The drainage system, when it is properly channeled, it can by 40 to 50 percent control flooding. And most times, the reason why flooding is existing and it is continuous in most of this property, why we have water log life basically is that most of these drainages are channeled to the wrong places. For some of us that are buying beachfront property, the very first question you should ask your, your developer is that what if water overflow floods the river or the beach? What are those pl contingency plans that the real estate developers have put into place to control this? In as much as fact that we all don't pray for natural disaster, but there are instances and times whereby these things happen, and when they happen, most of these real estate companies appear to be concerned because they did not put some necessary parameters to avoid this. Now, when you buy a water long line, the very first thing you need to understand is that you have to stand fill. Now, in the very first question you should ask whoever is selling or whoever is recommending the property is that who is doing the sand filling? You need to ask. And if they say that they are doing the sand filling, you need to ask them to what extent are you doing the sand filling? Are you sand filling the entire thing or you're sand filling it at a level where I need to continue? The reason why I'm making this instance basically is that I have been in this industry for the past six years and I've seen a lot of sand filling that has been done and once it rains the sound feeling more sometimes appears to be like a child's play do you understand so these are one of the things so if the developer is handling the sound feeling you have to ask to what extent now in most cases I'm, i know and i can probably tell you that most developers more importantly those who are selling ibejuleki axis right now don't have the financial capacity to sound feel not all but some that i've met don't and that is why you need to understand that if a developer is not sand filling the land, you need to understand that the cost of sand filling right now is not child's play. And in this kind of economy where things are going up every day, the prices of cement a few weeks ago is not the price of cement. The prices of iron rod obviously is not the price of iron rod. And when you're doing sand filling, you're looking at steeper of either mud sand, sharp sand, or deep, any kind of sand, depending on the nature of the land so in most cases as at a um, few months ago early january a trip of sand for um sand filling as at that time cost 120,000. this was around early january this year and i can assure you that the um this price would have gone up now you need to understand that ask question this land that i want to buy this waterlogged land how many trips of sand do i need to sand fill this place to the point that I can start you no know, building. And there are some places that after you have sand fill, you can't start building immediately. I hope the real estate investor is explaining the status of the place they want you to buy. More importantly, if you want to do a, um, a, 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 a pile foundation, you need to understand that after you have sand filled that place, you need to wait for the maximum of three to four months, in some cases six months, depending on the status and the nature of the land so in most cases some of the ibejuleki real estate developers don't even have the intention of sand filling the best majority of them will do is they will sand fill the entrance of the estates where the property is and they will sand fill the access road to each plot so what they will now do is that whoever is buying okay will have to do the sand filling by themselves and when you understand that this is the way the industry works the cost of sand filling, there are some places whereby you have to sand fill with all this red mud sand first before you sand fill with, um, with the sharp sand or the different kind of sand that will be recommended by the builder or the person that will be constructing the work on your site. So you need to understand that. So you ask question with sand filling, if there are sand filling, to what extent? And of course, what is the cost of if I'm taking over? Like I explained, some Ibejuleki developers are not sand filling. They are buying. Now, when you go to some places, some areas of Ibejuleki, I'll start giving instances. Folu is a place that is also a water prone area. Akodo is water prone. Ise is water prone. Ibejuleki, um, of course, the places also we have 
is also waterproof. So you need to understand that when you are buying all these places, more importantly, the um, Awoyaya Axis is also waterproof. So if you are buying this Axis, if the developer is not making adequate plan for sand filling, then you should also put it into consideration that you have to do the sand filling. And this is these are part of the advan disadvantages of buying water log lands. And if you have thoroughly understood this, this is when you can look at it and see if you can go ahead with it. Now, I'm not saying you should not buy uh, water log lands, but I'm just saying this because I want you to understand the cost implications of having and maintaining a water log land. And this is due to the fact that the cost of building material in Lagos, Nigeria is always on the rise. And this is why you need to work with a professional. Now, the sad story basically is that when you are inspecting a property during dry season, sometimes it is hardly um, difficult for you to point out if a place is waterlogged or if a place is dry. And that is why you need the service of a professional, somebody who understands the texture and the nature of land. And this is why we always say that work with the right, and some of our engineers and of course our surveyors can help you, you know, check the status of the land and they tell you if it is waterlogged or not. Now, if a land is waterlogged, that does not mean it is, no, it is bad. No, it is not. A waterlogged land, if there is a good drainage system in place, if there is a good, okay, um, sand filling process, if there is a good maintenance policy by the company on how to fix the road, on how to fix the drainage, and on how to channel the water properly, this would definitely re reduce the cost of water and, of course, reduce the ways water move to estates. So if you have a real estate company that are ready and willing to do this, of course, you can go ahead to you know buy the property and, of course, invest. Most of the places we now have on the island are sand field properties and people are staying there. And the reason why people are staying there is based on the fact that they have the developers have you know identified this problem and they have provided solutions before they arise. And on the other hand, there are other places that today a lot of people are regretting that they invested. So they are related investors, whether you're home and you're dias and you're in diaspora, these are some of the things you need to pull. So you need to weigh your options properly. And one of the ways that you can know that you are invest, investing in the right place is to work with an experienced um, hand in times, in times of property acquisitions. Because I've said it before, property acquisition has gone beyond the ads you get to see online. Property acquisition is a reality of fraud and sometimes manipulations. And one of the ways you can avoid this is to have the right person handling this. So this is where I'm going to draw the curtain of today's episode of Property Matters. Thank you very much for always viewing our videos and I'll see you in our next video. Have a nice day. God bless you. Bye.